mother-in-law tries to have me arrested because, well, I won't let her in my home. Guys, my name's Mr. Redito, and I read daily stories. Today, I have four stories for you, but we're going to kick it off with one of the most entitled stories I've heard in a long while. If this is something that you might be interested in, check out the channel, and let's hop into story one. This happened a long time ago, but after reading some posts on here, it reminded me of this. When my daughter was little before she started preschool, she's now 36, she would have difficulty breathing after visiting my mother-in-law's house or any place that allowed smoking. This was back in the mid-1980s when you could still smoke in restaurants and such. My wife, now ex-wife, and I do not smoke. Finally, after such occasion that my daughter was having problems breathing while at home, it was bad enough that we took her to the clinic. After examining my daughter, the daughter asked if we smoked. After telling him no, he asked if anyone in our house or extended family did. At that time, mother-in-law was a heavy smoker. She was the only person that would smoke inside our home. We had friends that smoked when they came over, but never inside the house. The doctor explained that my daughter was showing signs of a mild allergic reaction to the secondhand smoke. It was mild enough that treatment was not necessary, but we needed to limit or avoid exposing her to people that smoked. Mother-in-law and I have never been on good terms, but it got much worse after I posted no smoking signs inside our house. She saw them, but said it did not apply to her because she was grandma. She usually avoided visiting when I was home, and my ex would not stand up to her. Finally, mother-in-law came to visit when I was home. She came strolling in, puffing away, after I asked her politely to put the cigarette out. She refused, saying that she had the right to visit her grandchildren however often she wanted. I then asked her to politely leave and she pretty much ignored me. Now, I need to add something here. I was raised to be polite and respect others and that was reinforced by my Marine Corps training. There were some exceptions to me being a nice guy, such as putting my children or wife in danger, as mother-in-law would soon find out. Since she would not take me seriously and refused to leave, I physically picked her up and took her outside. Keep in mind, at this time, she was much heavier than me. But she had finally pushed me over my limits. I set her down on the driveway next to her car and told her to go home. I went back inside and locked the door behind me. My wife did not say a word, but she was smiling because she knew I could get away with treating her mother like that. Of course, that was not the end of the fight. Our neighbors had been old drinking buddies with my wife's parents, so mother-in-law stormed over to their house, calling the cops on me, claiming assault. It's a small town, and I know a lot of the cops, but the two that showed up, I had never met. Since mother-in-law called them and she met them in the driveway, by the time they started knocking on my door, they were planning to arrest me. However, I'm not dumb enough to open the door. After they hear my side and the fact that mother-in-law did not look roughed up, their attitude quickly changed. After showing my ID with my address given to them by mother-in-law, they step back from the door to talk a bit. A few minutes later, one cop comes back up the steps to talk to me while the other one went to talk to her. His next question actually surprised me. I've had a few not-so-nice meetings with the police, but he asked if I wanted to press charges. Breaking and entering, trespassing, assault, domestic violence was not a thing back then, by the way, and it was going to go against mother-in-law. Tempting, but no. My ex is an only child, and I'm not going to prefer bid grandma from seeing any of my four kids as long as it's on my terms. Example, uh, no smoking. Instead, I said I just wanted her off my property and that she would have to call before coming over. Anyways, side note, after this incident, she no longer talked directly to me unless I answered the phone, so that was a small victory for me. Relations with mother-in-law were pretty much gone. I rarely saw her, even though she also lived in that small town, but that's a whole nother story. Entitled grandma trained her daughter well because after 19 years, I finally had enough of ex's entitled attitude and I divorced her. Neither ex or ex-mother-in-law no longer talk to me. No hurt feelings on my part. They don't talk to each other even. Something I had wished for back when my children were little.
What's up guys, so this story really tanned my hide. I cannot believe that the grandma was such an evil person. I mean, she was literally putting someone in danger that she said she cared about so much. In my opinion, I don't think OP stepped out of line at all the way he handled the situation. In fact, maybe he should have pressed charges on this grandma who was so entitled. Turns out, OP ends up divorcing the mom and grandma anyways. Guys, let me know what you make of this story in the comment section below. Our next story coming up is about a surgeon who just performed an insane surgery. And unfortunately, things don't go as planned. Guys, this one's nuts. Like the channel if you're enjoying so far and let's get into story two. I'm posting this for a friend of mine. My buddy is a very good surgeon and has dedicated his life to medicine. He frequently goes to hotspots around the world to offer his services. He spent time in Syria, in Iraq during the war, in Africa. After 9-11 and the Boston bombing, he got in his car and offered his help at hospitals there. He's unmarried and the only thing he does for himself is takes three or four weeks off twice a year, once in July and once in December. He told me he does this so he does not lose his mind. On those times, he really lets loose. He'll go on a vacation somewhere, maybe take up a hobby, go skydiving, scuba diving, meet women, eat wild food, and at Christmas, he spends time with his brother's family and apparently gives some pretty nice gifts. He's as good as a person as you could ever hope to meet an excellent surgeon as well. Without giving too much away, before COVID at his hospital, they had a pretty busy day, which at a hospital is never a good thing. He was doing the emergency surgery after another, everyone was slammed and more people were awaiting for emergency care. One person had already died because of the backlog and a few more on the operating table. No matter how good the surgeon is, sometimes you simply cannot save people. In the mindset of all this chaos, Entitled Mother walks into the ER and begins demanding that someone sees her brat of a kid who had a bruise on his face because another kid punched him at school. Probably for being a brat, I would assume. The secretary managed to get her to wait in the waiting room with all the people waiting to see their loved ones were okay. Her kid went and apparently decided that he was the only one allowed to play with the hospital waiting room toys and would scream at any other kid who tried to approach. Our hero doctor, meanwhile, is fighting for the life of a 16-year-old who was in a car accident. No idea if it was his fault or not, but does it really matter? And sadly, the kid did not make it. I always feel this is the worst thing for a surgeon. They try their best, but sometimes it's not good enough. He has to get his emotions in check before going to face the parents. They have a special room for this in the hospital. It has comfortable furniture and a table that's nailed down. He's in the middle of breaking this awful news to the parents who are feeling a pain that words are too cheap to describe. When in bursts the Karen. Apparently, she followed the parents as they were escorted to the room. She took the look around and said, When are you done taking a break? My son needs... The doctor shoves her out and calls security. He finishes talking to the parents and goes into the waiting room. Secretary filled him in. He asked the mother who had been berating the security ever being so rudely treated by the doctor which child was hers. He went over to the kid and in the waiting room gives the kid a quick look over. Declares he does not have a concussion and tells the EM to get the duck out of my hospital before I call the police. Haha. <laughs> I demand you, says entitled Aunt Mother. Hero Doctor, no, I have patients that need much more than you. Your kid is fine, you just need to raise him better. Get the duck out. He had security escort her and her kid all the way to the car to ensure that she left. This is a guy who I've never seen get angry. He got robbed in Ibiza losing his wallet, all his credit cards, IDs, and his passport and shrugged it off saying he already canceled the cards, but an alert out for the IDs that most of the robbers got was maybe 50 euros and a nice wallet. But when he told me this story, he was shaking with rage. Alright guys, here's my opinion on this story. Here on Mr. Reddito, we read a lot of stories with entitlement and audacity and just straight up rude people. 
but this one might take the cake. I mean, how can you see a family that's obviously grieving? They just got some of the worst devastating news in, who knows, maybe their entire life. And this freaking lady stands there looking at the surgeon and says, Hey, when you're done with your break, my kid needs to see you. Like, who does that? Guys, let me know exactly what you would have done if you were in the situation of the surgeon or maybe even the situation of the family. Drop your comments down below and if you have had any similar experiences at the hospital, doctor, ER with entitled people, I want to hear about it. Guys, we're about to jump into story three. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel because there's so many more stories to come. Sorry if some sentences feel awkward. I'm not a native speaker. I work from home and my job's relaxed and does not require me to get glued to the screen. My girlfriend works in a stressful customer service job and most of her days are terrible. In the two years we've been living together, I do practically all the chores around the house and I try to treat her like a queen when she comes back home. However, the one thing I can't do is be a handyman, no matter how easy the task is. A few months ago, the bathroom door hinges needed replacing, so I called a friend to help. Last week, during lunch with her parents, I asked her dad about the project he was working on. He does woodworking as a hobby. He showed me the progress on his phone and suggested I help him with the last touches. My girlfriend told him that I can't even replace door hinges, let alone help with that. Her mom said that every man should know how to fix things around the house and her husband agreed with her. The remainder of lunch was very awkward. It was likely they were my real parents and were disappointed for me being a huge failure. After we left, I told my girlfriend that I did not expect their reaction. Instead of taking my side, she said that they were right because it was embarrassing that I needed to call a friend to help with something so trivial. I reminded her that I get nervous and anxious sometimes I touch a tool. I admitted it was stupid, but it's just the way I am, and has been very honest with her since the start. Still, she did not change her mind once. I told her that since their idea of being a man is twisted, I must share the same view and start working on being the version of a man. I told her I will stop cooking for her, and I'll start doing the dishes, laundry, and cleaning. The only thing I will keep on doing is the taking the trash out and grocery shopping so I could focus my time and effort on becoming a man. I don't know guys, this story just seems like it's full of red flags for the relationship. In my opinion, I don't think OP and his girlfriend are going to last long, especially when his girlfriend would not even stand up to her own parents, who are basically saying that he's worthless and useless if he can't do the basic man job. Let me know in the comment section down below, guys. What would you do if you were OP? Would you break up with your girlfriend? Would you try to work something out? Or would you go the route that OP did and said, you know what? I'm not doing any more of these supposed women chores. I'm going to focus on being a man. What do you guys think of that? Drop your comments down below and we still have one final story left in today's video. This one is about a wedding, and it's an Am I the A-Hole story. This one does get pretty dicey. Guys, we're about to step into story four right now. I'm a 26-year-old female, and my wedding was last week. It was amazing, except for this issue that occurred that caused a fallout between me and my in-laws. My husband, who's 26, has a younger sister, Cindy, who's disabled and is in a wheelchair since she was seven. I noticed that my in-laws do not treat her as a priority and never take her out of the house or include her in any of the family events and instead have her stay at home. I felt bad for her since the day I met her. She's sweet but looks broken and lonely. Mother-in-law started huffing because I tried to get Cindy to join us while eating dinner or going to the beach. She, mother-in-law, flat out told me she does not like Cindy to be outside to protect her from getting insensitive comments from people, even relatives, but in her tone, I sensed that she was essentially trying to hide her. I told my husband and mother-in-law about wanting Cindy to be at the wedding. They declined, saying that she would take away the attention when it should be on us, and said that they could not stand having guests asking questions or making comments about her, 
We had an argument over this and I insisted that she comes and I refused to let it go. My husband and mother-in-law finally agreed and said they'd bring her to the wedding. Well, at the wedding, I noticed she was not there and I asked, looked closely. My husband lied, saying they brought her but she had to be taken back to get her medicine. I waited and it felt like he and his mom were lying and stalling. I went to ask others if they saw her and my husband and mother-in-law finally confessed to leaving her at home. I got mad and then immediately had someone go over to mother-in-law's house to get Cindy. My husband and mother-in-law started arguing about what I did and said that I was acting recklessly and irrational. I told them it was not okay that they excluded their own flesh and blood from the wedding and told them that hiding her and acting like she was something to be ashamed of was appalling. Cindy arrived with my husband's aunt who was there with her at the time and I had them sit nearby. I made sure that Cindy enjoys her time despite feeling out of place a bit. My husband and mother-in-law were mad at me and mother-in-law said that what I did shows how I will be treating them for years to come by overriding their wishes and disrespecting them. I told them Cindy's presence was not hurting anyone but my husband said I ruined the wedding by making a scene and fussing over it. This set the tone for the rest of the week. He's still upset with me and keeps having conversation with his mom about what happened and is making me feel disrespectful one in the situation. Story number two on the day that's tanned my hides. What in the world? Cindy is a human being. Not only that, she's literally blood related. If I was OP and I just noticed this now on the freaking day of the wedding, I might get cold feet. Who in the world does this to an innocent girl in a wheelchair? She wants to be a part of it too. I'm so proud that OP said, you know what? This is my wedding and I'm going to have Cindy here whether you like it or not. And the, the husband has no backbone because he wouldn't stand up for his own wife when she wants someone here that deserve to be here. Guys, let me know what you make of this story in the comment section below. If you agree with me or not, that's okay, but I want to hear your opinions. That's all the stories I have for you guys today. My name's Mr. Redito. I read daily stories. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, consider subscribing, and I hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye for now.